Thank you for tuning in to RadiCars.com. I'm your host, Patrick Greeno, and this is my buddy, Dan G. Hey, Pat, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Doing well. Yeah, how's your week going? Uh, it's going well. You know, summer. Yeah. I have to work. All right. So. Awesome. Tell us what you brought today. Um, so last week, you and I, we were discussing certain cards, and this is one of the ones that came up. Uh, and it's just more so a representation of the subset mm -hmm. that we were talking about, not so much the the individual Um you know, he was on top of the stack, and so I just grabbed it. Yeah. But uh, basically, it's um, one of the tops um, Throwback Thursday cards, uh, and it's one that really grabbed me. I don't know if, you know, people are familiar with the Throwback Thursday, but it, it happens to be one of Topps print on demand mm -hmm. from their website type of things. And uh, they do retro stuff, um, and they put modern guys on it, kind of like the archives, but a little more limited. Um, you know, and generally, you know, they have between five and, you know, seven guys in, in the lineup and, and they do them every week and they use different backgrounds. And so, uh, this one caught my eye because it was really unique. They did baseball players on the, uh, on the Star Wars galaxy background. Nice. And I thought that was really cool because yeah. typically they, you know, they just choose, you know, some, one of the sport backgrounds, but this was sure. a non-sport background with, with, uh, with baseball on it. And so um, I brought the example of the Shohei Otani um, Tops Throwback Thursday um, Star Wars Galaxy background. Um, if you notice in the in the upper corner you can see the little logo it says Baseball Galaxy which I think is pretty cool. So I, I really uh, liked the idea. I thought they were cool looking cards. Um, you couldn't go wrong with the guys that they had in the lineup. You know, there's Kershaw, Bryce Harper, um, you know, Mike Trout. I mean, just to name a few. Sure. Uh, and so I thought it would, was really cool. And so um, bought one set, kind of regretting, regretted not buying two. Mm -hmm. You know, get a look at the back there. Uh, and, you know, when they showed up, I liked them even more. So I was, you know, really excited. Nice. So I love it. brought it here so that you could see it. And... Your viewers could see it. Cool. Yeah, he's uh, he's in all kinds of products this year. Of yeah, course. he is. He's almost, I mean, I guess there's no l limit. It seems like to the you know the number of options that you have to play with. Right. Uh, with between all the tops boutique proprietary release stuff. Right. To all the different Bowman stuff. Mm -hmm. To mainstream. Um, and he's products. in some of the Panini. You know, so he's there's, he's all over the, the board, and so it's nice to have a degree of options available to those of us who want to acquire a yeah. Shohei Otani rookie card. Un unfortunately, though, he's oh, gosh. got some issues right now, you know, which is a tragedy because tragic. You know, everyone loves him in the hobby, yeah. or at least most people love him in the hobby, and uh, his injury uh, could be more severe than we realize. Yeah. So, uh, so for those of you who don't uh, know, it's a, it's a, I think it's a grade two. Um, uh, strain of the UCL. Correct. And so he actually was diagnosed and put on the DL on June 8th, and it was the same day that the superfractor was announced to have been pulled. Right. But, you know, people give the guy that pulled the superfractor a hard time, saying, like, he's the unluckiest guy. I'm like, no, that's not true. <laughs> like, well, dude, it's a great card to have regardless. It's still going to take, you know, a lot of money, you know, to yeah. get it. So. Yeah, it's like, it's 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 still a great card to have regardless yeah. of whether or not he's on a DL. And, you know, if, if he ends up having Tommy John surgery, we won't see him until 2020. But, you know, I mean, this is the, the, the going rate of a pitcher. You know, I talk about this in a blog post is that he pitches right, but he bats left. Yeah. Which means his dominant batting arm is not his hurt arm, which right. means that he could potentially be batting as he's recovering. This is like something that I don't playing think they're going to I don't think I don't they're, think they're going to chance it. that. Yeah. <laughs> but this is an argument that has been going around online is like how can we use him still since he's a dual talent player. Yeah. And so yeah, sadly he's on the DL right now and we don't know what's going to happen as of this recording. Uh, but probably down the line in a couple of weeks we'll have something happening like yeah. we'll, we'll, everybody will know what's going to happen with Otani. Um, you know, and I I was it, I was looking at the sales of his, his his items, the big sales last month. Right. And because he's on the DL, I don't think we're going to see those big sales numbers anymore. No, no. But, you know, I guess it goes, you know, something to be said that, you know, if you're investing, mm -hmm. it's 
you're, you're riding a roller coaster. Yeah, it is. Right. If you're a collector, right. it's a great time. Right. Because things are going to be discounted. You mm -hmm. can acquire a lot of them. Think about Strasburg. And that that's happened. a good point too. Right. Is it? Is it like being on the DL isn't the end of the hobby? Yeah. You know, it it, it actually allows for uh, part the participation of people who collectors who wouldn't otherwise be able to afford right. such items. And so. There are pros and cons to these kinds of things. I mean, it's all bad for the player. I, I, I never want any player to get hurt. Correct. You know, it's, it's always sad when any player on the team gets hurt. Um, uh, and, you know, these super spiked crazy numbers, we probably won't see again for a while, mm -hmm. um, if ever. And, and that's okay because we, it was fun. The month of May was a lot of fun yes. to watch this, to see the Bowman's uh, chrome sales and see all the stuff that was produced and see all the... The, the the cars that were being the surfacing online and and it's been it's just, been a lot of fun the hype behind it was amazing it's truly right? and like like i just said i mean if you're investing you know you're going to buy a dog every now and then yeah and it could be that this you know might just be a hiccup in in his career and right you know we, we don't know a lot of guys but, come back from tj oh a lot of them do. and they they they, pr they produce great results well they do you know and so you kind of have to just roll with that and realize that that, that this is almost that's not almost say it's not a guarantee but it's a high probability with pitching just mm -hmm. because of the the strain on the arm the elbow um, and so this is a very common thing I mean Strasburg is still very dominant mm -hmm. at when he came back I mean he's been overshadowed by Scherzer but and, and other players and other teams but um, he still performs exceedingly well when he's healthy right and so you know, with Otani, if he can bounce back quickly, you know, whatever that means, uh, we look forward to seeing him produce right. more excitement. One thing that we um, have a, the tendency to forget also is that, you know, he, he has a huge following yeah. in the Asian market. Right. So if, if, you know, he loses steam here in the United States, that, you know, that doesn't mean he's going to lose steam globally. No, so, yeah. You know, there's still a lot of people that are, are acquiring his cards because of that connection. You yeah, know. no, truly, and I, I yeah. think that that's not ever going to go away. No, I mean, you see, we, we talked about Chan Ho Park recently, right? And he still has a following in Korea, in the Korean market. Um, Hideo Nomo still has a following in in that culture as well, and so you've got guys that came up that are you know from a certain area that they'll they'll always have fans, mm -hmm. you know, and each hero will always have fans forever, right? Even some of the more obscure guys like. Um, Kazuo and Matsui still have, mm -hmm. you know, their followings. Hideki Matsui is actually one of the role models for Otani. You know, if you look at the way Hideki Matsui hits, how he stands, it's very much like the way Otani stands. It's very similar. Some of those, you look at that old 93 stuff, the B BBM, I think it's called, right. uh, with, with uh, Hideki Matsui, you'll see his stance. Compare that to the 2018 finest card depicting Otani in his batting stance, they're very similar. They're very, very similar. And it's very cool because Otani looked up to Hideki Matsui. And I think that, that you can kind of see that, 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 that resemblance, rather. And um, it's just kind of cool to see um, some of the older fellas be role models for some of these newer guys. And, um, you know, going back to it, they're, they'll always have some amount of marquee value in, 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 from the cultural side of right. it. Right. So I think it's great. And, you know, I hope that he's, he's able to bounce back quickly and, and we'll be able to enjoy his, his uh, performance again soon. It's good sure. stuff, man. I'm glad you brought that over. Not a problem. Is it glossy front on there? It is. I love it. It's so cool. Awesome. Um, and even the font in the top left is very Star Wars-y. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this past weekend, I, I spent some time in, in Dallas, Texas while I was there. I uh, went to a card show in Plano that uh, Rich Klein was putting on. So, Rich, if you're watching this, thanks. You did a really great job uh, putting that on. It was a lot of fun meeting you in person and um, getting to kind of uh, get to know you a little bit. And while I was there, I went through his box, among others, and I cherry-picked a few items, some, like, you know, vintage and um, some modern, some cool stuff. But we're going to talk about one card I grabbed today that's, that's really interesting. Uh, and, and this is a... Okay, well, before we talk about this, when you buy a pack of cards, mm -hmm. it's two and a half by three and a half. Right. Every card. You can't fit anything. I mean, there might be minor deviations with millimeters, like minor, minor, minor. So you see this, like, a lot in the really old stuff. Right. You wouldn't really see this in the modern. 
because the quality control has been picked up quite a bit. But if it's quite a bit wider, quite a bit taller, obviously it wasn't put in a pack. So in 64 Tops, I, I found this Mini Minuso. Um, this example wouldn't fit in a pack. So this entered market through some other means whereby someone had an uncut sheet and they mm. were cutting it out or this ended up in the hands of an employee and he backdoored it or this was scrap and someone found it in a dumpster but this wasn't a pack issued Minoso. Mm -hmm. there's no way this could have been in a pack because of its dimensions and obviously the way it looks it's cut yeah so um in a way this is a one of one right it's not like i'm going to see other mini minosos cut like this it's a strange thing to think about yeah, right? that's a stretch but... <laughs> that's a stretch <laughs> but the shape the dimensions the um, corner missing yeah everything about this <laughs> card is very obscure and so uh, when i saw it i was like i'm just going to get it because i'll probably never see it again and so uh, really interesting stuff very very like unrelated to the, what we just talked about right but, but very cool to me and um i so I, when i was going through i was looking for stuff for my thrash category i was going through this guy's box and i was go, i was picking out stuff from that category and i found like some really just hammered items just really gnarled pieces and this was one of them it was just loose in there because they're it was just raw because there's no way to protect it because right. it's its shape i got this right now in a card saver too because this is the only thing it fits into <laughs> okay <laughs> can't put it in anything else I don't do the binder thing, so even if I did, I'd have, have, yeah. have to get a four-pocket page to get it in there. Um, but I figured I'd just grab it since it's so unique and so obscure. Have you seen stuff like this, Dan? Uh, I, I've seen similar things, uh -huh. but usually they're like like wax box bottoms or yeah. you know, post cards that right. have been miscut. Right. Uh, you might have something that like it's a sh you know the edge of a sheet. I don't know anything about the 69 and how they were 64. Oh, I'm sorry, 64. Yeah. How they were positioned um, so on the, the sheets. Here's the back. Someone wrote on the back of it there. Um, for a, a, a half a minute, I just, I almost didn't buy this. You know, I went I went to Texas with my mom, and I, she was she stopped by the card show. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, was, I asked my like, mom, should I get it? She's like, just get it. You'll probably never see it again. It's like okay. So uh, this was a nice obscure ad that'll go into my graded box and what place it fits, but it won't be graded ever. It'll just stay in this card saver right. too. Um, I like it, you know. I think it's cool. Yeah, it's really it's different for so sure. So different, man. I mean, I don't really have much to say about Minoso because I, I I don't have much of his stuff um, or or the '64 top set. Um, most of us have already. You know, know quite a bit about that set. Um, it's a great vintage set, though. I really dig the white board. It's just really a clean set. Cool stuff. Um, but uh, there you have it. Awesome. <laughs> this is my 64 <laughs> Tops Mini Minoso. Uh, I don't want to say it's uncut. Miscut. I have yeah. <laughs> Cut. Cut. This is a cut Chomped. card. Yeah. <laughs> so... Danny, you have any, any thoughts on it? Just whoever did cut that, uh, you know, didn't use a straight edge for sure. <laughs> well, it's, it's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that scissor cut, yeah, for sure. It's got perfect centering, you know. <laughs> they did a really good job razor sharpening the edges there, the perfect lines. I like the 90 degree corner <laughs> cut. That's, right, 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 in the bottom. That's, that's really, yeah, it's really it's nice. It's probably one of the straightest cuts on the whole thing. Oh, it's so clean. <laughs> grid out like at least a nine yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, the thing is if i sent this in for grading i would only be able to get authentication i think what you would need to do is have them give you as many of the qualifiers as possible right 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 just say i want everything yeah yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> the get person all that... those little letters right right, right. <laughs> i want everything behind it i want to see all of it miss cut you know <laughs> would they even do that for grading you think i don't know maybe yeah. you should try yeah, right. <laughs> So rad. This is so cool. I uh, I just think this is such a unique, strange. I really like it. It's it's just way outside of the scope of the type of stuff I end up buying or looking for. Uh, but it totally fits into like a category of stuff I collect. So that's cool. 
So there you have it. Dan, awesome. do you have any final thoughts? I'm good. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Thank you for tuning in to RowdyCars.com. I'm your host, Patrick Greeno. Thank you, Dan, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Of course. And until next time, enjoy collecting. Take care. If you like this content, please subscribe. Thank you. Enjoy collecting.